to Berlin. So let us celebrate this beautiful day of the Ambassador. And now I would like to invite Madam Principal, Professor Prasen, to deliver the welcome address and to comments on this program. A very good morning to all of you. A warm, the warmest welcome to Dr. Lamar. I'm sparing his day for even on holiday. It's our obvious week that you've agreed to come. And you know, he is very particular about time. He came before time and he had to wait for a petty person like me. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, but we are all here today to remember this great man. Long life doesn't matter. Long life doesn't matter. Even in a short time, we can do a lot of things if we want. And he is one of them. This is one example that you know, we can never forget. In fact, of course, that could be a different platform where we can talk. He has done more than anybody else in our country. It was independence and for the people of this country. Sadly enough, he is not remembered much. He has not been given due importance. And he lived. For the so called, I, I talk in quotes because I believe in class, I believe in equality, I believe in fraternity. So he was one person who was trying to bring in equality, fraternity, liberty for the so called downturning people of this country. India during his time, and even now, let me tell you. Even now it exists, probably it exists more in its in a very discreet way. Everyone talks of democracy, but I don't know how far we are democracy when we are trying to make you know, differences between past, truth, and religion. Until and unless we all come under one platform, until and unless we make ourselves or transform ourselves into a, into a humanity. Indian race as a whole. I think this country ourselves, we will not be allowed ourselves into a super race. Indians are supposed to be super race. After the Germans, the Jews, Indians are supposed to be super race. But if you still think that, you know, we, we still stick to a narrow minded attitude where we are only giving importance, we only think of ourselves. Our society, our, our language, our religion, then we are nowhere. We don't get the chance to improve ourselves, probably, to be a better human. And when we talk of caste system, caste system is a very, very real. There's lots of space. Please sit down. <laughs> so, you know, I have a very, very ugly practice of it. <laughs> Very much exists. When it comes to us, we have cases in India, north, down south, down south, they have tried to uh, minimize this. But up north, up north, it still exists. The class system exists. Even the hostels are divided. It's very sad. And you know, educational institutions. Where you also know you ask college. I'm 
father of the nation. I don't know who made them, but did you get another platform? <laughs> did you get another platform to talk of? <laughs> so we pretend to be saints. But we are saints don't have to know that we are saints. Their work tells us, and that we are celebrating 101st birthday that shows that even he was a saint for long for some of us who understand. And the apostle started very early. He says, Yes, he says, in the constitution of misuse, he was the first person to <laughs> burn it out. In fact, that's again in the hundred and this God's unwritten because he was actually not a part of the original constitution signed. He was the last one he signed, though he was the making, he was one of the architects of the constitution. And yet, people, when, you know, when things are done, they just, they just shuffle it. Sight. Your work is done, you get lost. It's that kind of attitude. And it is still exists in our society. And so, you see, like, when we are talking constitution, we see we talk of law, we talk of constitution, we talk of rights, and all that. And to think that this great man has worked. You know, his life was full of um, struggle. Full of struggle. He got, if, if he did not get scholarship from some of the kings, and probably some of the kings of some of the states, the Republican states at that time, you know, he couldn't have continued his studies. He was so determined. We are so tired. Some of us are so tired because we have done one page. And he is a person who has done twice. And that came from some very good institutions of the world. London School of Economics, Columbia. And he was determined. He was, he was so disgusted with the society that he was born. He was, you know, then he realized if, if, if this is the stage of Hinduism, then we get out of it. Then we get out of it. If Hinduism talks of classes and classes, then we get out of this, of this whole, whole situation. And he went on and he converted himself. And he was happy. How did he make the right decision? I, I'm not here to say whether he's, he's done the right thing or the worst thing. But the interpretation of religion, religion itself is not bad. Any religion is not bad. But the way it is interpreted by petty people, again in quote, I will tell you, petty people, that makes religion, you know, some of the religious groups, an axis problem. And, you know, I would, you know, I wouldn't take much time of Amari. He's an expert today. I'm not an expert. I'm giving this. No, you're enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> Even time and time is my when it comes to talk. So some of these quotes, you know, he says, I have hopes that my countrymen will someday learn that the country is greater than men. Yes, our country is greater than men. And you realize this when you go all to India. Just as you realize in the autos of Megalaya, when you step out of Megalaya, so also when you step out of India, you realize. How fortunate we are that we are born in this country. We look at the West and we think they are lucky. And they look at us and they think we are lucky. You know, the grass is always green on the other side. So we must have, no, I'm just quoting some of this anecdotes. We must have a government in which the men in power will give their undivided allegiance to the best interest of the country. We must be true to our country. We must be true to our country, to our state, to our religion, to the family. This is what it means. And that will bring you into problems. And high vision of untouchability is my birthright. So you see, he took it as a, as a birthright. This says, Lokman Yatilak has said, freedom is my birthright. He says, and high vision of untouchability is my birthright. The word untouchable, the very fact we say, Harijas, we are actually the market in the as someone different, as someone low. The very word Dalit, if you if, if Dr. Ambedkar was alive today, he would agree with the use of Dalit in today's world. There's a lot of debate on the use of the word Dalit. Because that's the word Dalit, you know, sort, sort of segregates you from, from other people. But you're not, you're not someone different. If you were to cut, I'm not saying you're talking about the Dalits, this is what that is. If you were to cut someone, you would all need red. No one will eat blue. No one is blue Dalit. And yet, there's this difference. 
Untouchability has ruined the untouchables, the Hindus, and untouchably the nation as a whole. Religion and slavery are incompatible. You cannot put together. You cannot say I'm a religious person and yet you differentiate with other, other people. Religion does not teach us to differentiate people. It teaches us to be one with others, to empathize with others. Because all of us do not know from where we have come and where we are going. Thank you. I don't want to be dependent on things to your own efforts. We are born here to do good deeds. Through our good deeds only we can get salvation. This is what he says. This is what he says. And this is the end of all religion. Who understands religion and who is a spiritual person. The great man must be motivated by the dynamic of social purpose and must act as a scourge and scavenger of society. Yes, we must look at the people who are so much of differences in the society, who is trying to divide the society in the name of past, freedom, politics, and religion. The movement of social reform will result in the emancipation of our people and the establishment of such a state of society in this country of our people. We are all equal, whether I have money or I have money, whether I am um, poor or rich, whether you know, I am dark or, yes, that I am dark. Or are you fair? We are all equal. In fact, we are all different God. If at all we believe God, if I can connect politics and religion together, we are all children of God. And one of his quotes that really impresses me, and, and, and I stick to it, I always stick to it. I am first in India, and the end also, I'm in India. Because I'm born in this soil, so I'm in India. And, and when, I, when I will die also, I will die in this world. So, you know, I am inviting the spirit of that place, of that country. And when I talk, you know, I am first in India, I also say, I am first in India, when I am born and brought up here, and I always with my spirit over the years, and that is my prayer, I should die here. Nothing will be more grateful. I will be so blessed. I don't know where I will die. But I will be so blessed if I can die in this place. Because this place is my place. And I belong to this place. With these few words, I would like to celebrate this great man who is so indebted to him for, bring, for teaching us to differentiate between discriminations, different kinds of discriminations, and to fight. To fight against all kinds of discrimination. So fight. Fight for the right cause. Thanks so much. I would like to invite Dr. Ramadan to the next place. And we'll learn a lot of what he Thank you so much. <laughs> We are also glad that Professor Hassan Mamari has uh, accepted our invitation to be a part of this program along with us in the college. Thank you so much, sir. Once again. Professor. Is a famous teacher in the last 15 years. Professor Hassan Lamari has published a number of books, articles, and papers, both in vernacular English research programs, edited books, and also in the form of popular papers. He has also produced many documentaries, among books, and his own statements about India, China, Alliance, 1860 1863. Reflections, a collection of points, the giantias studies in society and change, Ryan Skies, collection of points, and giantia oral narratives, among others. So, we are looking forward to this uh, lecture on the Arameka, and we are so pleased that uh, we So, we are looking forward that from uh, coming days, also, we will be 
Thank you so much. Thank you members of the college. Uh, thank you for being here. And uh, most importantly, still friends. Uh, uh, sorry to, to have you on a day like this where you're supposed to be somewhere else, right? It's a holiday and you're not supposed to be in the college, but then uh, your teachers have forced you to, uh, to be here and listen. Somebody, you know, who, I don't know whether you'll be able to gain anything much from whatever I'm going to share. But then uh, listening to what people have already uh, talked about, and so much of information was already been said. And um, <clears throat> I don't really know whether I can, uh, you know, supplement uh, more than what uh, you have uh, already put across to us. Thank you so much, man, for this information. Uh, yes, still, so, good morning once again to all of you. Uh, today I was uh, thinking that uh, maybe this entire talk, if I can just bring it or twist it a bit, to look into the importance of this man, in light with uh, whatever kind of contribution that he had made to understand our own society. I just want to draw that link, okay? And it is here where I would like to reflect on his thoughts and also on his idea of positive discrimination. Discrimination as a word something which is not appreciated, all right? The moment we use this word discrimination or the moment we practice it, uh, there's a, a big problem there. But then in that kind of a negativity, I would like to draw the elements of positivism there. So I, I, I want you to kind of uh, try and understand this aspect of it. And um, just in case, in the course of my talk with you, if you if you feel bored, okay, don't hesitate to raise your hand so that I'll stop immediately. <laughs> but before you do that, uh, please give me uh, a chance a bit just to put across as to what I uh, have to say. And whenever it comes to this kind of a uh, talk discussion that I have to to you know like uh, put across, I am that kind of person who likes to do this homework first. So uh, apart from the kind of, uh, you know, like the uh, information which I used to share in, uh, you know, in our PG classes, you know, students, because I take a paper called History of Ideas, so your teacher here, uh, Dr. Lasso, will be able to relate to that, okay? Uh, there's a lot more which uh, I'd like to, to share with you today. Well, let me start by putting it this way, that this man sometimes, it does cross our mind that the question is the same, there's something wrong with it. Now, why do I say this? Generally, as humans, we always like to tread on those paths which well, are easy for us. We won't really like to venture into something that can create problems for us. But then I don't know, maybe from, from our friends, our young friends here, maybe you like to have the kind of a, a spirit of adventure where you might like to venture into something big, something beautiful. But then, hear me out, okay? This man on that ground, he had chosen the difficult path to fight, to fight on behalf of him, to fight on behalf of those people, like man already pointed out, the untouchables, to emancipate them from the subhuman conditions to a position of dignity of person in society. Their condition were put to such an extent 
where it became next to impossible for them to do something for themselves even, forget about doing for others. It was said like this, that this man, he led a social reform movement to educate the untouchables of human rights, to organize themselves, to vindicate their rights, <coughs> to have self-confidence, something that we can learn. Self-help by ourselves, like Matt already pointed out, and to agitate for civil and political rights. Now, in order to create a public opinion, because just trying to give lectures will not matter much, so therefore, he needs to reach out to the public, to his own people. And in that context, in order to create a public opinion, he wrote several articles, especially in the journal that was started up by him, which maybe you all are aware of, is called Both Night. The literal translation of this would be leader of the Dumb, D-U-M-B. Dumb is people who cannot express it in that talk. Then there was an, also another one, journal. It's called Bahiskrit Bharat Excluded India, where section or a large section of people were all the excluded. They were not part of the mainstream. Then he also wrote on the equality, the Janata, and many others. He would also organize protests, marches, and I'm going to refer to one which he was carried out at Maharashtra, where he organized a conference to exercise the human right and indispensable fundamental right to drink water. Can you imagine? Where the people, they were not allowed even to drink water. He belonged to that kind of a society, that kind of a, a community where the People who belong to the upper classes, they will not even allow people belonging to the untouchables to drink water. Water from where? Water from the place where the people in the villages, especially, or in the plain areas, if you can relate what I'm trying to say here, they would have a place from where they would go and draw water from. And it was said that birds, animals could go to these places to drink, but not humans. Belong to this country. It's a very, very sad state of affairs. Is it happening now? Is it still happening now? Imagine right from the time we had lunch this struggle. Sad to say that in our country today, we are still going through this kind of very painful pain. At Nasik, he also launched a movement in the year 1930, the 2nd of March, to allow a chance to the untouchables to at least go and visit the temple. But then the kind of discrimination that was there, the orthodox section of society, they never allowed them. And to that effect, we, we noticed that this struggle went on for many years, and finally they were successful. Who was this man? The question now comes to us. Dr. Lasso, I have already mentioned to you about him slightly, but today I would like to share a bit more about this man and also to, to reflect and also to relate to as to how I can link him up with whatever I want to present to you today. His original surname, anyone here who's comfortable with this part? The original surname of Baba Sahib Ambedkar? I, I, I doubt that you will be comfortable with that. Let me tell you, for those of you who are interested, his surname was Sakpal, S-A-K-P-A-L. But then his father registered his name as, when he went to school, his father registered his name as a man or boy who came from this native village called Amba Dawe, A M B A T A W E. That's the name of the place. His father registered him in school. In the school records, it's been shown like that. 
in school records, it was not shown Safa. That was the surname of his father. His Brahmin teacher, by the name of Krishnaji Keshav Ambedkar, changed his surname from Ambadavekar to Ambedkar. And the school records shows this, that his original surname was something else. His father gave him a different surname. And his teacher perhaps must be very impressed with this boy, who's been despised, not loved, who been segregated, who been made to sit, uh, you know, not close to the other students, sit separately, and perhaps was impressed with his intelligence and gave him this surname, his own surname, Ambedkar. Bhimrao Ramji Ambedkar, popularly known as Babasaheb among his followers, was perhaps the most controversial of the field. In Indian public and political life, it's being said that there is no other character perhaps who would be so controversial in his approach towards others and approach towards his own personal life. In spite of his incomparable scholarship, his humanity, his patriotism, his clean character, and his encyclopedic knowledge. What does it mean here? A person who knows everything. I used to have one teacher while I was studying Athens. He taught me a lot. Until today, I'm still, uh, whenever there's something new I need to discuss, I used to fall back. It's really a treat to have someone like him. Ma'am, I think you can relate to this person whom I'm referring to here. Professor Abhijit Chaudhary. He's an amazing man of a person. You can talk anything to him on this side. I call him a walking encyclopedia. Be it science or be it history or be it anything. You can just sit down and learn so much from him. Ambedkar was a man with a Past knowledge and uh, the kind of wisdom which he had. And perhaps it was because of this that many people they come out. He always posed as a challenge to many other intellectuals at the time. I will not go into his school days or into his college days. I have only given a lot of information. But then I would like this small audience here to just imagine this few things that I can look about. Imagine a situation where people, they were deprived of basic human dignity, which today we call it the essence of human rights. What really happens to those people, people with that basic right is being right. In the case of the untouchables, they were deprived of so many things. They were not allowed to move freely. They are not allowed to work on the street like any other people. They have to follow one particular fashion on the road. They were not allowed to draw water, like I said earlier. They were denied entry into places of worship. They were denied entry into schools and colleges. And they were forced to live in the outskirts of the towns or villages. The most hated group of people to ask. Imagine the plight of those people. Imagine the plight of the family members, the plight of their children, but no fault of theirs. Now, in trying to understand this anti caste struggle of America, it is important for us, especially for our uh, faculty friends here, to link it with the anti-colonial struggle to overthrow British rule. And it is in this context that his agenda of anti-colonialism was seen as intertwined with the agenda of, as man rightly pointed out, the annihilation of caste. In the course of organizing anti-caste and anti-colonial struggle, he realized that the annihilator of caste was closely related to the 
fatigue of the user. However, it's important to remember that and that he did not join the freedom struggle, like the other leaders of the Indian National Congress, he had his own reasons for it. He was of the opinion that the cause of the freedom was not the cause of the untouchables. Think about this. The cause of the freedom struggle was not the cause of the untouchable. And he believed that India's freedom struggle was a struggle for power. At one time, he even thought that it would be prudent to cooperate with the, with the Britain and work for political and social cultural rights of his people. This view, let me tell you, was also held by many other social and religious reformers. If you have talked about Indian renaissance, which is again debatable today, well, you must remember that many, starting right from Raja Ramu and right others, they were supporting the British rule because they knew it very well. That it was only with that kind of a rule that changes can be brought into the Indian society. Can we have honest students? Yes, yes. Okay, so uh, let's try and relate to this. Okay? Now, for this view, this man Ambedkar was branded as a stooge. He was branded as a traitor. He was branded as an enemy of India. Several abuses were hurled at him. It was only later that the people began to take notice about these ideas. If one would try to look into his political ideas, Ambedkar he distinguished between communal and political majority. He emphasized that the majority rule was not considered a holy command anywhere in the world, but was only tolerated as a rule. Here, references is being made to political majority, which you can relate it to the present day as what's really happening in that country right now. He doubted if majority rule was able to India, because in India there is a permanent communal majority. Strong words that was used by him. He talks about this idea of communal majority. And he adds, let me please permit me to quote this bit here, which I consider to be important in order to understand his political ideas. He says like this, I quote him. In India, the majority is not a political majority. In India, the majority is born. It is not made. That is the difference between a communal majority and a political majority. A political majority is not a fixed or a permanent majority. It is a majority which is always made, unmade, and remade. A communal majority is a permanent majority fixed in its attitude. One can destroy it, but one cannot transform that communal majority. Good one. Let me skip on a lot of things and come to something which is uh, which I feel that it is important for me to like upon today. In his book called The Thoughts on Pakistan, I don't know whether you have come across this book or not. You have this book, man. Very nice. Ambedkar was in support of the march. Ambedkar he supported the idea of Pakistan. And he has weighty reasons as to why. He supported it. Ambedkar says like this, okay, he does not really consider the Hindus and Muslims to be one nation, basically because they did not have a longing to belong together. The Hindus and Muslims. Now, these are not my statement. These are his statements from his books. He says there was the absence of bonhomi and assertion of differences by a large number of Hindus and Muslims in 1940, let Ambedkar to declare that partition was acceptable. Ambedkar found that there was the absence of a common historical antecedents as Muslims' invasions, I quote here, Muslim invasions were a matter of pride for the Muslims and shame for the Hindus, quote unquote. These are strong observations that was made by this man. 
But then, let me also tell you this, that Ambedkar also put conditions for the acceptance of partition. He did not really agree to that idea that partition would be forever. It should be on a trial basis. He said it should be for 10 years. And after that, there should be a plebiscite. There should be a plebiscite. Northwest, here in the East, there should be a kind of plebiscite for the people to decide whether they want to be with Pakistan or whether they want to be with them. These are very interesting statements that was made by him. Ambedkar, he regretted the belief that Hindus and Muslims are not merely two classes and sets and sex like Protestant Catholics, but two distinct species divided from divinity and humanity. In an article written by Rupendra Yadav, where he titled it as Errant Nonsense, Ambedkar on Communism in Proceedings of the Indian History Congress, in the year 2004, volume 65, page 325 onwards. Find that there's a very strong uh, narrative that's been given by this particular author about uh, what Ambedkar has to say on that kind of a problems which was going on in India from 1940 onwards. Ambedkar also recounted that the majority nations in history had either destroyed the nationality of minor nations by denying them a right to their language, religion, and culture, or allowed them a separate autonomous and sovereign existence. Ambedkar thought that by not allowing either of these options, most of the Hindu nationalists at that time, they were creating more problems for the people in India. This article called Arendt Nonsense was against the speeches that was made by the Hindu Mahasabha president, B.D. Sarokar. You must have heard about him. And Ambedkar was of the opinion that many of the statements that was made by this man, he will create a lot of problems for India. It is up to us now to understand whether these problems are happening now, or whether they were just part of a kind of statement. Friends, let me draw your attention to the first um, <laughs> Okay, let, let me just continue with this. And let me bring you now to this idea of positive discrimination. What is this idea of positive discrimination? And Ambedkar was uh, stressing on this idea. Now, in the article that was written by H.S. Dividi and Ratan Sinha, titled Dr. Ambedkar, the Pioneer of Social Democracy, in the Indian Journal of Political Science, volume 66, number three, they stressed on this idea of positive discrimination. And they said like this that we are Ambedkar. He advocated the concept, which he preferably called as special safeguards. Please try and relate to this. This is where we can relate. For us who are here in the Northeast, and for many other tribal people elsewhere in different parts of India, this is where we can relate to this. And also to thank this man, okay, to thank him for following this kind of an idea called positive discrimination, for advocating this kind of an idea. Now, he called, he called it uh, positive discrimination in order to have some kind of a special safeguard for the Shudu caste and Shudu tribes to overcome the disadvantages and to compensate the unequal initial advantages enjoyed by the privileged groups. Positive discrimination is seen as a means of ensuring equality by overcoming the effects of prolonged subordination and disadvantage. Ambedkar was of the opinion that the long period of suppression, subordination, and exploitation had seriously handicapped the members of discriminated masses and placed them at the disadvantage 
in at least three ways. Number one, let's listen to this. The kind of discrimination that was there in India had diminished their motivations and aspirations. The discrimination that was there had pushed the depressed classes, the shuttle class and the shuttle tribe to such a level that there is no more motivations with the people themselves. Here's a question that we can ask to ourselves. What is our position right now? Or what has it been before? And or how is it going to be henceforth? He had only summarized this by saying that that kind of a suppression discrimination which was there had made the people of the Shidil caste and the Shidil tribe to be lacking in that kind of motivation and aspiration. We're not motivated, we don't aspire, we're just kind of complacent with everything. It is this kind of life that we are going on and maybe there's nothing more that we can expect out of it. Well, he says, the children belonging to the dominant social group, they from a very early age aspire for the most prestigious social and economic position. Children of the discriminated masses, they were not even accustomed to think about it. Not even in their thoughts that they can aspire, that they can crave for something which could be going on for generation had deprived the sugar class and the sugar tribes from the ability to even aspire for prestigious jobs. Does it really explain as to why we don't even sit for computer exams? Does it really explain as to why we don't go out for higher education? Does it explain why there's so much of school dropout? And Bitcoin tells us like this, that that kind of discrimination which was there for years together had pushed the people, the student class and the student right, to not even think of aspiring. Can you imagine? Today, 21st century, we are talking about this, whereas this man had talked about it that time before India attained independence. We have always seen the problem. And I'll be very happy if you can relate to all this, even the faculty members, I mean, the students, if you can relate to this. Think about not about others, let us just think about ourselves. Where are we and what are we doing with ourselves? Secondly, jobs were open to all. <laughs> but then the oppressed and the discriminated people, they were unable to compete successfully with the members of the better off social group. While we were coming up to this auditorium, ma'am was just asking me this question. So what about this new rules we have just come? I was just talking with Dr. Lasso and the other colleagues also in principal's chamber about the entrance exams, <laughs> which you all, the moment you pass your exams, you'll have to sit down for your interview exams to enter into a higher level of education. Till today, you can still go to the different universities, you can still go to the different colleges. I want to still study here that you have faced the entrance of that. I'm very open I'll bring up again to you. Jobs or opportunities were open to all he says, yes. But then the oppressed and the discriminated people were unable to compete successfully with the members of the better off social groups. He says, the better off social groups, they lived in an environment that provided access to better schools and other associated benefits that came from the wealth, that came from the higher social categories. Therefore, they had advantages against which the deprived people could not compete and win. Thirdly, in addition to inequality of background conditions and social position, it was found that the children of the dominant social communities performed better 
in standard examination and that the members of the dominant committee had an edge over the others. In order to correct all these disadvantages that were suffered by the sugar class and the tribes for generation together, he proposed this idea of, what was that? Very good. The idea of positive discrimination. In this context, discrimination is not bad. That's what I wanted to do. It's positive because it was aimed to help the people belonging to the different classes. You want me to stop? Can I get it more? Is it okay? Can I, can I get it more? Yes. Oh, thank you. You know, man has said so many things. But I can't just help but then have to refer again and again to her. <laughs> when she was talking about the father of the nation, I don't know what made her to bring Gandhi into the picture. But then, uh, this is where I would like also to, since you have mentioned that, this is where I would like to, to bring in Gandhi and also that these two were at long race to one another. They just couldn't get along. They just couldn't get along. Gandhi, he claimed to be leader of the, what he called the Harijans, which Ambedkar immediately objected. He said, that word should not be applied to the Apachimans. He said, Gandhi was a man who belonged to a different strata of the society. How is a man belonging to a different caste category can understand the plight of the untouchables? He said, I belong to that category. I am from there. And nobody else can replace me. As simple as that. And he wants to take the cause of an idea where the stress was on least discord and voluntary change of heart. Gandhi talks about that. Do good to the people, do good to your enemy, and there'll be a change of heart from your enemy, and your enemy will be good to you. Gandhi talks about that. It's a, it's a, it's a nice thing, really. If one, if one can really do it, probably to listen to this kind of uh, discussions or debates on those issues. But this is one area, this is one area where Ambedkar, he made it very clear that Gandhi doesn't really impress him. Because his people, his own people, the untouchables, they were going through. A miserable phase by myself for generations together. There was no change of heart from the people belonging to the upper in society. But they didn't want to oppress them over and over again. When will that change of heart take place? In that context, it's not all trying to work what Gandhi has to offer. Ambedkar protested against the use of the term origination and said, okay, he used the term and interpreted it as the literal translation of the movie, children of God. Now, Ambedkar was of the open that the Dutch was to be referred to plainly as protestant Hindus, non-conformist -con non Hindus, Completely as untouchable. And he was very skeptical about the success of Gandhi's approach, especially to elevate the grievances of the depressed classes, or oh, sorry, to, 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 to free the depressed classes from the kind of grievances which they were having. And he also said, like this, that the claim of Gandhi as a leader of the depressed classes was a false claim. Totally a false claim. And he criticized Gandhi for it. With regard to the Indian National Congress, he also made it very clear that that Congress was dominated by caste Hindus. No place really 
for the private section of the society. If Gandhi was a reformer, Ambedkar was a revolution. That has to be kept in mind. Gandhi became immortal in the history of India as the father of the nation, as a man already pointed out. Ambedkar, on the other hand, found a special place among the oppressed and despised section of the society and was referred to as the savior of the depressed classes. Let us remember that it was through this kind of effort that was made by this man that the untouchables and the different tribes have secured their privileges and rights under the constitution. He was given this very difficult task to draft the constitution and his ability to do that, in fact, speaks volume about the man himself. Imagine to draft a constitution for a country like India, which is so, so diverse in all aspects of it. It requires statesmanship. It requires wisdom, understanding, sympathy with millions of Indians. Doesn't end there. Needs to have knowledge of law, geography, economics, and a strong background on the history of this country. All this you can combine, all this knowledge you can combine one man on the curve. Just imagine this capacity to think. The college for this kind of opportunity that is good for you. And if it can be, please have it every year. And maybe you encourage others also. And this, this day should not just go as a holiday, but then have to be served. Can you imagine a man with so much of diverse knowledge? If you talk about law, geography, economics, history, and also to have that kind of a statesmanship and wisdom. Wisdom. You will have to differentiate that. Knowledge and wisdom, they're two different things. Knowledge, you go to the classroom, You'll get knowledge. The teachers will give you a lot of information. Go to the internet, go to any site, you get all kind of information that you need. That's called knowledge. Wisdom is totally different. Wisdom comes from your own understanding. And how do it comes from your own understanding? This is where you develop your own faculty inside you to start thinking critically. This is where wisdom comes. And not just to go by mere standard knowledge that is available. Imagine the depth which this man has, where he can relate to all the people, the diverse communities which are there in this country. And it is because of this that he was praised for his outstanding ability. Our friends from political science will be able to relate to the different articles. Article 17 of the Constitution, Article 19, Article 25, Article 29, I will not bore you with all this. Article 330, Article 332, and 335. All this talks about the different provisions for the Shidu caste, Shidu tribes, and as to how the Constitution should have special provisions, special provisions for seats, be it in the assemblies or be it in the appointments of union and state services. Let us not forget that also. The appointments in the union and state services. Now, this effort that was made by this man, Ambedkar, and his idea of positive discrimination helped in so many ways. It had helped in providing reservation to these categories of people, the depressed classes, okay, the other backward communities, the Shidu class, the Shidu tribes. And today we have people from these sections of the societies manning important posts within the central or within the state government. For example, some of them, they're working as chief ministers. Some of them are appointed as governors. Some of them are IS officers, IPS, chief secretaries, vice chancellors, professors. The list goes on and on and on. 
if it had not been for this man, then perhaps things will still be difficult. This, this is something which I would like to impress upon you that we must not forget the contribution of this man. And therefore, he must be celebrated. Now, to end my talk with you, this man believed that democratic form of government presupposed a democratic form of society. The formal framework of democracy was of no value and would be a misfit if there was no social democracy. Strong words used by him. And he highlighted that people, they should be ready for challenges. This was a call that he had given to his own people. Nobody will free you from the bondage that you are in. You can free yourself by working for that freedom. Ambedkar was a multifaceted personality whose work and personal struggle continued to inspire countless people to fight for social and economic justice. His action by life took his own toll on him. He was suffering from diabetes and was bedridden from June to October 1954. He was also suffering from clinical depression and failing eyesight. He died in his sleep on 6th of December, 1956. The government of India conferred the highest civilian award, the Bharat Ratna to him on the 4th of April, 1990. And it was a befitting honor bestowed on the fighter of human rights. With this, I end my presentation for today. Thank you so much for your patient hearing. Thank you. God bless you. So once again, thank you very much for this wonderful, insightful, and wonderful lecture, yours, sir. And rightly, sir, you pointed out that this man has contributed immensely to the nation, and then we should always remember. And then we can safely say that he is truly the maker of modern India. And then he is also a nation. So maybe perhaps because of this contribution, uh, you know, immense contribution to the country is why we remain united till now. Because our country is so diverse. So that's why because one, because of this contribution, that's why we are like this today. So thank you once again, sir. Now I would like to put back. I take this opportunity to give thanks to, on behalf of the history department, to each and every member who has uh, contributed to making this program a success. And first and foremost, I would like to extend my appreciation to Professor Namari for having uh, accepted our invitation to come and speak and uh, you know, sharing your valid thoughts. And I'm sure it's a takeaway not only for me, but for each and every sitting here today. So thank you so much, sir. And I hope we see you again very soon. And also, I take this opportunity to thank uh, our respected principal ma'am for initiating this program in you know, celebrating and uh, the life of the mentor as well as rem uh, you know, remembering his contribution to our society, especially today. Uh, also, I would like to express my appreciation to each and every non-teaching staff as well as the teaching staff who has contributed to making this program a success and work behind the scenes. A uh, special mention, I would like to mention uh, Sir Mandre from Political Science Department who has helped us with the online streaming of the program. Uh, we also have Ms. Dahan's aim of English Department who has helped us with the ramp tour and uh, also uh, Baruben and uh, Bahari from the non-teaching staff who has provided us all the requirements. Um, also, I would like to extend my gratitude to the entire faculty of the history department, the one for team who has worked behind the scenes, each and every one, Ms. Iba, Ms. Uh, Sir, Sir Sashi, 
the Marbiam, who has uh, made this program a success. And last but not least, the Lasso, who has been very much involved in the complete planning and putting together of the program. So thank you so much, Kenta, our HOD. And yes, the last but not least, our students, that our presence today, this program would not even have happened. Yeah. So, thank you for attending for making a show today. And that's all for me. Thank you once again. And I, Sophia, signing off for the day. And I hope you all have a great day. Thank you. Especially the honor student. Learn a lot of this, and I hope that uh, you keep all this in your mind. And when we leave, we are understanding easy enough to understand. <laughs> so, thank you very much. The plan is over. Yes. Yes. And of course, you have. Yes. You have. Yes. 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 Category that does not mean you will become complacent. Sit for competitive exams and show that you are not less than anybody. I always believe that God has given us equal size of brain. Everybody. Everybody has that same small size of brain. If you want, you can reach the sky. Aim for the sky, you will get the stars. Don't be scared of conditions. Don't be scared. Be prepared. Life is going to be very, very difficult in the years to come. Our life was not completely before. But today, as we see, you know, like speaking to post-corona, life has really become very, very difficult for everybody. So please, you are all capable of doing the best. You are all capable. Nobody is incapable. Please do not say impossible. See, sir has just met, mentioned about the entrance exam. Be prepared. Be prepared to face it. Because the more you learn, the more better you are. So don't shy away from the entrance exam. Be it uh, uh, or the university or the campus. Be prepared to face it. Do not tell people. Never think you are better. When you think that I can't get into the when you think I cannot get into the exam, you listen. Thank you so much.